Hi, welcome to the Child Care Aware of Minnesota legislative update for the week of ending March 1st. Uh, my name is Ann McCulley. I'm executive director of Child Care Aware and here to give you a bit of an update on what happened last week and also look ahead to the week coming up. Um, you can find information about any of the bills I will mention on our website. And in particular, I would direct you to our bill tracker that gives you links to the active bills and you can read a lot more about what I'm about to share. But let's get started. So the highlight of this last week was the release of the February budget and economic forecast. Uh, this becomes the often the kickoff to the legislative session in terms of guiding any new budgetary decisions. Keep in mind that our budget here is set in Minnesota through June of 2025. So the only need to adjust that budget would be um, during this session would be if there were desires to make some additional spending or if there were a deficit to make cuts. Um, the budget picture does look better than it did in November. Right now there's a projection surplus of $3.7 billion, and that's an increase of $1.3 billion over November. However, even with that, um, the current spending and the current income, if that continues at the same pace, would result in a deficit in 2026 and 2027. So um, there may be pressure not to do any or at least a lot of spending this legislative session. Uh, moving on to some committee hearings this last week, three of the bills I highlighted last update um, still continued their movement. One of those, House File 3646, carried by Representative Pinto, and Senate File 3770, carried by Senator Wickland. Um, this is the bill that creates the statutory infrastructure for the new Department of Children, Youth, and Families, and it had additional stops in both the House and Senate this week. Uh, because of all the departments it touches, this will probably show up on our next few updates. Um, Senate File 30. 3790 carried by Senator uh, Hofchild. This was the bill that was heard the previous week in the House, uh, focused on helping more parents be able to access child care, moving us toward that goal of having no family pay more than 7% of their income for child care costs. And again, focused on trying to help families who are um, make too much to qualify for our uh, public programs, also known as the Great Start Scholarship Program. And finally, House File 3782, that's the Education Policy Bill. That was heard in the House last week, previous week in the Senate. And this is really the education, overall education bill for E through 12. So it does include school-based pre-K programs, and we will be following that. Speaking of school-based pre-K, three new bills had their first hearing um, all in the House Children and Families Committee this week. The first of those is House File 3785, carried by uh, Representative Perez Vega. Uh, this is a bill that would take the existing allocation for the voluntary pre-K program that's currently split into four buckets and make that five buckets. So uh, specifically what it would do is take the money that right now is lumped together for Minneapolis and St. Paul voluntary pre-K and make it a designated um, a payment for both Minneapolis and St. Paul separately. So no new money, just expanding the ways in which the funds are divided. Um, another bill carried by House File uh, by, by Representative Perez Vega, House File 4176 would take what's been on the books as the School Readiness Plus program and merge it into the voluntary pre-K program. And those two programs had existed separately for a while. They each had slightly different criteria and approaches, but this would blend them together to be a singular program as in the voluntary pre-K program. Uh, the final bill heard that day uh, last week was House File 3721, carried by Representative Coulter. Uh, this is a bill that would expand the existing um, eligibility in before school and after school programs to include pre-K age children. Right now, schools can offer that type of care for K through 12 or K through 8 most often, but um, this would expand it to pre-K. Um, the premise being that when we have children already in the schools in those VPK programs, for instance, it would allow them to participate in before and after school care. Um, this particular bill had a lot of discussion and was what we call laid over for more discussion, in particular due to the impact it could have on other forms of child care that currently serve those pre-K age children. Um, looking ahead, we have once again three hearings so far this coming week, the week of March 4th. Uh, the first of those is the Senate side again of the policy for education, E12, and that is Senate file 3567 carried by Senator Swidzinski. Uh, this time the hearing had had an original um, or the bill had had an original hearing. Now it will be a hearing with testimony. So if you are interested in um, testifying, you can find that information on the legislative website. Um, and again, being the education bill, it does include pre-K in school education as one of the policy areas. 
On Tuesday, the uh, House Children and Families Bill will be receiving, I'm sorry, the House Children and Families Committee will be receiving an overview of the education forecast uh, because K-12 or E-12 education is built into the budget and needs to be funded. There's always what's known as a forecast to look ahead to see what those requirements are and how they might have changed. That um, does not yet have a bill number, but it will by this week and will be heard in the House Children and Families Committee. And finally, in the Senate, we have our first tax bill of the season related to early childhood, Senate file 3473 carried by Senator Kunish. Um, this would expand what's currently available to our K-12 teachers, primarily in schools, in the form of a refund refundable educator expense income tax credit. I have to read that one. Uh, what, it said, what it means is we know that teachers often pay out of their pocket um, for materials and things they need in their classroom, and this way they can qualify for up to $300 in terms of a tax credit to offset the fact that they have made those expenditures. Right now that's limited to K-12 in schools. This would expand it to pre-K age, and not only in schools, but also in licensed centers, Head Start, other settings that um, serve those children. So that is it for this week. Um, I certainly encourage you again to come to our website, take a look at our legislative bill tracker, read up on what you're interested in, drop your comments to us if you are enjoying these updates or want to see any changes, and we will be back with you next week. Thanks, everybody.